Hi, so what I'm going to show you here is uh, an example of using uh, Node-RED on the Raspberry Pi 2 uh, in order to do uh, some very simple control. At this point, I've not introduced security or external addresses, so this is purely internal, but there are several ways of, of making this work externally. Now, uh, for credentials, I've been using uh, NetIO, an example of which you see here in the picture, uh, on the Android phone for nearly two years now to control a variety of remote um, applications. So uh, if you look up uh, NetIO, it's all one word, you'll see that it comprises um, two aspects, uh, an app for the mobile phone, it's available for Android and um, Apple and um, um, a web-based uh, interface where you can drag and drop buttons and set things up uh, the way you want. So if we look at this image here, I have four sets of on-off buttons to control um, four outputs on the uh, Raspberry Pi and a, an NQTT test button of no relevance uh, really um, and four indicators. So as I press the on and off buttons, those indicators will change and lights will go on and off on the Raspberry Pi. So um, uh, basically the setup for NetIO on the Pi is simple enough, on the, um, on the phone is simple enough, and there's plenty of detail about that elsewhere. So we'll, we'll concentrate on the Pi. I'm using Node-RED here. What you're looking at is um, my Windows PC. Uh, which is talking to the local Raspberry Pi over web interface. So the screen you're seeing is Node-RED running on the Raspberry Pi. So how do we control this phone? Well, we need to take a TCP um, input, that's a wireless connection from the phone to the PC. We need to process the information coming off it. We need to control the phone IO pins, and importantly, we need to reply uh, with TCP uh, to the phone, otherwise it just locks up. Um, of course, it's not that simple because, um, well, let's say, for example, you set GPI or zero to be on, and that's fine. The light comes on on the GPI, or uh, what happens if the Raspberry Pi closes down for any reason and starts up again. It doesn't know the state of um, the pins or anything. So what you need to do um, is store the state of the pins so they're non-volatile. You do that with a, well I've done it with uh, MySQL. So up at the top here I have MySQL in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, simply I have a table with four entries for GPI or not to uh, three. And whenever I set the output state, I, I do two things. I set a global variable within Node-RED and I store the um, change in the database. Why do I need a global variable? Because if the indicator on the phone wants to know the state of um, one of the um, outputs, you can't actually read the outputs as far as I can tell. So I thought, well, I'll simply, whenever I change an output, I'll store it in a global variable, which gets initialized on, on power on. And um, then I can just use that, that value. So um, there are a couple of uh, things here. I have the initialization page on power up, read the state of the four pins, and set the outputs accordingly. So let's say I've got output zero turned on. I switch a Raspberry Pi off, switch it back on again. It powers up, it reads the state of the database and sets the pins accordingly. So um, let's dive in to what is a function block on the left here. Uh, as you can see, a function block where you can um, write code to do more interesting things. If we double click on that, it's nowhere near as complicated as it looks. Uh, there are basically two areas to this. I want to control pins, and, and I may want to, the phone may want to see the status of those pins. So 
I chose a simple text format, um, uh, which you see here. So what I do is I take the message coming in from the phone and I trim off any carriage returns because NetIO tends to like uh, carriage returns as the sort of delimiters, if you like, um, and by default won't work without them. Well, you don't want that. You just want one or naught for a state of a pin. So I'm trimming any carriage returns or excess space off the incoming message. I'm then splitting that message up um, into separate uh, words separated by commas. So, for example, I may say I may send a command from the phone that says GPIO zero uh, GPIO uh, comma zero comma one, which means GPIO zero. I want you to set high. I want you to turn the light on. So, depending on the incoming um, uh, message, uh, I say, right, if, G if message, my message zero equals GPIO, right, I'm wanting to control outputs, <coughs> there will be stored the state of the, w what I want, one or a, a zero. So, depending on which port I want to control, if it's zero, I write a MySQL message to update the pins set GPI or zero to that value. I store that value in the global variable, which we'll see use of later. And then I return an output. I have one, two, three, four, five, six outputs uh, here in an array. And down at the bottom, I have told that block that it has to have six outputs. So you can see I'm writing here to the first one and the fifth one. If we just take a quick look at the block, the first one is um, GPI or zero. And then that second last one there is TCP replies. So I have to set the output to one or not. And also I've got to reply back to the phone. Okay. So what you're seeing here is just repetition. There's the same thing for pin 1, pin 2, and pin 3, not 1, 2, 3. Right. On the other hand, if the message I sent was GPI or question mark, this is entirely arbitrary what I'm saying here. Uh, if I put question mark, that means I, I want the state of GPI or not 1, 2, or 3. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you, I don't think you can actually get that from uh, Node-RED easily. Um, so I've stored the value in a global variable. So if you look at, um, let's say I see GPI or question mark, comma, naught, that means I want to see the state of GPI or naught. Well, there it is. I set the message payload to be the context global um, variable context global dot GPIO naught plus the carriage return because that's what NetIO wants. And I put that into the payload and I simply send that to nowhere else but the TCP output. So the message going back to the phone is um, one or zero. So if we cancel that and have a look, you see these outputs here, no, one, two, and three, they say, okay, uh, because they haven't been set. Well, I've got the phone in front of me, and as I'm talking to you, I will switch the phone on, if you bear with me a second. Right. And I'm going to turn output naught on. You see up here where that's just turned into a one? I'll turn out, put one on, two, three. So they're all now ones. So I'm pressing buttons on the phone. I'm going to turn all four of them off now. And they've gone off. Now, if I was to say, set one of those as on, shut this down, start it all up again, it would stay at that value. Okay, and there's a light on over on my Raspberry Pi on the right. So the MQTT send was simply uh, an extra that I stuck on the end here. Uh, if uh, my message naught equals MQTT, 
I just pass it out. First of all, pass a message back to uh, TCP to keep the phone happy, and also send a message out to MQTT. I've done nothing with that whatsoever, but it was just an experiment to send uh, a button press on the phone out to an MQTT message. So, for example, um, that MQTT message could be, and that might be on an ESP8266 um, little mains control module. So I could just press that on. Currently, I haven't implemented getting any feedback from that, but that was just the first um, stage. So let's just go back and have a look at the initialization uh, on power up. So um, that is the inject module in Node Red. And I've just ticked the little thing there that says fire once at startup. Read the database, read the pins. Oh, and what I'm going to send is select star from pins. That message is sent to the database, the pins, and the output message goes into this function block. So the uh, in the payload, so I'm setting four variables. There, and I'm saying GPIO payload equals message payload not GPIO not so uh, and then one two three so I'm taking the information from the database and setting the global variables on initialization and there they are and then I'm just uh, returning the, the outputs of which of course the state of those outputs then actually physically sets GPIO one two three. So this happens once only when the uh, when the when the um, Raspberry Pi two powers up. Uh, these pages here, incidentally, are different things going on. They're all happening at once, regardless of whether you can see them or not. Uh, so there's a, there's a lots of other things I'm experimenting with here, all going on at once. I have. Um, GPI 05 um, on the Raspberry Pi, which is flashing on and off once a second for no other reason than just to let me know that the Raspberry Pi is actually working. That's a really simple one. Look at the timestamp indicator, repeat interval every second. Uh, do more, nothing more than toggle a variable on and off. Context toggler. If the context toggler is not a little one, it's one. Message payload equals one, otherwise set to zero, and message payload equals zero. We take that message payload and we fire that at GPIO five. Uh, the message, the payload system, a one or a naught. And if you look down, just under GPIO five, you'll see there that there's a one and a naught alternatively. Uh, and over on the right, my Raspberry Pi has a nice white light, which is flashing on and off. So if you had your Raspberry Pi sort of mounted on the wall doing various control jobs, you could use that spare pin just so you can take a quick look and you know it's actually working. Um, and so that's um, that's basically it. Oh, I think while I'm here, I may as well show you the frost alert. This is a little test. So uh, this is an MQTT message uh, coming in uh, called test in. So if, if my MQTT client sends uh, a message test in with the temperature to, to here, what we have here is a function block again. And the function block, um, if context TP, I'll just call it TP, um, doesn't exist, set it to zero. So if message payload, that's the incoming temperature, is under six degrees, and if context TP is zero set to one, message payload equals frost tripped return the message. Otherwise, return nothing. So what we're saying is, 
if the temperature is under 6 degrees, and I haven't already reported this, make a payload message, frost tripped. If it has already reported, well, obviously, I don't want to send that message over and over again. So the output of this is message payload, frost tripped. And I just feed that to um, email. And if the, let's say I have a device that every minute is sending out the temperature, uh, outside temperature, and it goes below 6 degrees, then it's going to send me an email just to let me know um, that we're heading for uh, frost. Uh, I'm not using that for anything real, it's just a test. I'm sure 2 degrees would probably be more practical. And so all of these things are going on at once uh, using Node-RED, uh, which doesn't seem to be in the slightest stress. You may notice over on the right-hand side uh, these payloads uh, are coming in. Um, that's an experiment I'm doing with a web page where I have a web socket coming in. Um, I get the status of the LEDs and I send that information out to uh, LED socket out. And what do I do with that? Well, I have a web page running JavaScript and web sockets and I'm going to show you this page here. So this is a real uh, page, a web page sitting on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it could be sitting anywhere, I guess. It's connected to the web socket. And uh, back here, um, what I'm doing is, in, in the web page itself, uh, a few times a second, I'm sending out a test message. So that's these messages coming uh, in. And I'm requesting the status of GPIO nor one, two, three, kind of in a loop. So every time around the loop, I say, oh, well, like, well, let's see status of one, then two, then three, and then four, and then back uh, to the start again. Uh, and so we get the let's see this, and we send that back to the sockets um, page. So there's your page there. I'm going to once again grab the phone. You'll notice that output one is on, and we'd set output one in the other um, uh, program to, uh, sorry, output naught to one. So now I'm back on my phone and I'm going to turn the output off and you'll notice two things happen. Um, the indicator up here goes off. I can, I can turn them all on. There you go. You can turn them all off. I'm doing this on the mobile phone. And this little dummy power meter here, which is just um, similarly in JavaScript, I'm sending a, 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 a value to that um, uh, this is high charts, incidentally. I, I just basically cribbed information from the, uh, there's the high charts demo there. And if you click on their demo, there you go. And you can, um, you can have a look at the uh, code. Uh, you notice this is working in real time there. So I basically took their code and down at the bottom here, there's some random uh, information for setting that dial. You can see the dial's moving there. So I took that out and just injected in the information from my uh, GPIO. Uh, and as you can see, it works. There you go. Turn it on and the little meter goes up. Turn it off, the little meter goes down. Okay, I'll put a bit more uh, meat on this at a later date, but to sort of give you an idea of the kind of things I'm, I'm messing around with using the Raspberry Pi and uh, Node Red. And ultimately, um, I shall have a number of ESP8266 uh, boards sitting around sending MQTT messages back to this lot and hence controlling and monitoring remotely using those.